hi again. Welcome to an episode of the Film Production Podcast. This week we're talking about script writing. Hooray! <laughs> we've got we've got Cheston, we've got Alice, and we've also got Beth here today. <laughs> so um yeah, it's it's script writing, guys. You're all script writers or script supervisors. Um and yeah, I mean, this is a very highly requested episode, so no pressure. Um, oh God! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I don't know if you want to kick it off with some. We've actually had like loads of Instagram questions as well, so I don't oh. know if you'd rather have um, Instagram questions first, or if you just want to, I don't know, do a little bio about yourselves. Maybe that'd be cool. I've, I've not done this in a long time, so I'm sort of like <laughs> have to do it. Bio. Go on. Y- yes. <laughs> sure. We'll start with Chesden. Put you on the spot. Well, why me first? Um, <laughs> you're, in the, you're, at, you're in the right place on the screen. Me. Um, so I'm Cheston. I uh, write and direct. Um, I've written quite a lot of uh, short scripts uh, in comedy and drama, mainly. That's nice and short, it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we move on to Alex. <laughs> Uh, I'm Alice. I originally started off as a producer, but then I got into writing scripts last year and I just kept writing and the film that I've made this year is the first one that I wrote that got made. So that was very exciting. But yeah, I've been a fan of script writing and writing in general for a long time, but I didn't really do it and properly until about last year. So yeah. Very good and Beth. Hello. Um, well, I'm a lecturer here on film production in script writing, if you don't know. Um, and I uh, I describe myself, well, I'm a, I'm a script consultant and my job basically has always been about working with writers and for writers. So I'm all about kind of story and about the craft of story. Um, and I run a company called Script Writing North. Um, which is a script development hub for new emerging and professional writers. So I work with writers all the time, just talking stories, basically. Um, Kind of that's what I do. Um, Yeah, is that all right? Is there any, I don't know if there's anything else you want to know. It's fine by me. I mean, so so just to to put this in sort of context of the university. So Mm -hmm. I assume Alice and Chez here both been to you about their scripts for their third year films which have either you know been in the process of making until corona or <laughs> have been made you know just before um so what was the sort of i don't know if you could break like all of you just in general could sort of break me down the process of what you guys actually do for people that maybe don't know do you mean in terms of the final film project and how that kind of development worked do you mean A that bit, do you mean yes as well, yeah, so I, I think more focusing on the student aspect for the moment um, and sort of like what, how, how do you sort of go from the point where you have an idea of a script and then get to the point B, which is like your final ready to go script. Okay. Should I hand that over? To, I'll get, should I give a little bit of con? So for the final film project this year, we ran um, a three week intensive script development kind of program um, and Chesden and Alice were both on that as writers weren't you um and that kind of went from having an idea of a script all the way through into the development and the writing of the script and up until making the film but in terms of i would say in terms of your individual journeys i imagine cheston and alice in terms of the development of your script i don't want to talk for you i imagine that was kind of different (laughs) processes for you both oh yeah definitely i think so (laughs) yeah i am so the like original sort of one of the earlier drafts um i think i first showed beth uh draft three uh, of uh, no refund um, was that the first week that i'd start starting yeah i was like i'm <laughs> straight to you um and uh so that was like draft three that i was on um but then um yeah i mean we, it developed quite a few times, quite a lot, and changed quite a few mm. times um, over the process of um, having the, the cl- script writing class with Beth and the workshop that Beth ran. And, um, and then also during the 
pre-production and the natural production stages um, you have to sometimes amend uh, the, the script um, to sort of make things work better um, because I was also directing it I think you know I had more um, leeway there which is a good thing because um, sometimes you know when the writer says this is the final script but then when the director starts to um, work on it and things like need tweaking then there can be changes made that the writers aren't always happy with but <laughs> obviously because I was directing it myself as well then um, you know and the producers and everyone was sort of involved in that process then it there was more changes made to it afterwards. Mm. So Alice like in terms of your scripts like how how did you sort of go through the development process like what was what was the starting point for you and sort of how did it end up after the session basically this three weeks course almost well I think the way we started like I knew that I wanted to write a script that had no dialogue and kind of focused on like uh, the environment and stuff and that's how I started it and I worked with my director Georgie who like we bounce like off each other really well so we kind of like throwing ideas around and we wrote like a, a really rough draft and then when I took it into the sessions basically just kind of it got kind of ripped apart brought back up like over and over which I think was like the best way because it really helped to like show the flaws in it that I could like work through the kinks if you know what I mean and uh, we kind of went through like writer's voice or stuff like that and I just think it made it so much stronger because I, I really relied on other people's feedback to kind of make it work and I just think that's like that's basically how I went through it um yeah because as far as I understand sort of everyone's the sort of the process that people go through in terms of you know coming up idea generation all the way through to a final script is obviously different for everyone um mm. but is there I don't know if Beth you because obviously you've worked with a lot more writers mm. I don't know if there's some sort of some sort of general trends that you normally will set people on in, in motion to get them you know sort of the right on the right tracks almost with with how they should, should be writing I, I definitely think that um I, th I, I feel two ways in terms of I think there's definitely a process that is kind of uh, almost universal for, for writers that you may go on at different points so like even you're saying Chesson in terms of you have a different you might have written the script but might not have done the plotting but you might come back to that plotting at a different point yeah. um, and kind of relook at it or someone else might spend ages plotting and then get to the script I think that people go through all of those stages but maybe in different orders depending on their own process um, I think you know um, for me, like with the writers, I'll often work even so for the three week um, development, even though everyone had a script at that point, I kind of for the first kind of week, I wouldn't let them go near, near the script. I was like, you've got to leave the script. <laughs> we've mm. got to step away from that and kind of work out what it is that we're trying to do. So, yeah, I think, you know, if you're starting right from scratch and coming up with an idea, I think, you know, there's questions that you might ask yourself as a writer because you don't know where the ideas necessarily come from sometimes or you really know where it's come from and then you've got this real kind of uh, faithfulness to the idea and it's then kind of identifying that it's finding a home for that idea and how kind of you find that framing and then plotting is a whole kind of bag and but you'll go through that but it's very kind of individual but when we use the word plotting that sometimes feels really um like a box and you're like oh I've got to do a beat sheet or I've got to do this and you're like well that might work for you but there's so many ranges of that but I feel like you move through those almost those steps and then you get to script and then you start a whole other process <laughs> that's like the start hmm. of another process once you get to script um but I think I maybe I don't know for me I'm often when I work with writers kind of identifying that it is a process is like a major step I think for a writer um and I, I often I don't know probably people hear it a lot I am always about like being kind to yourself as a writer seeing kind of process as actually a process rather than a, a critical thing about your idea like I, I, got, I don't know how to make it work <laughs> you're like oh that's just part of the process enjoy it when you're like no I ain't this bit <laughs> So I have a pretty good question here from Instagram, and I don't know if you want to do this as a first sort of Instagram question, but um, so I think it's a nice way to sort of start it off is um, what sort of 
what what inspired you guys to become writers what where's your what why did you want what is it about writing that really you know gets you off (laughs) (laughs) what was it you like I always give the example for me that when I was a kid so back in the 80s um, (laughs) I'd never heard of script development I'd never heard of being like a, a flipping script consults and I hadn't heard of those things but I, I remember going into school in primary school and I'd watch it's probably inappropriate I, I've looked now and it was 15 so I probably shouldn't have watched it uh, but I'd watched Gorillas in the Mist the film and I where I came into school and I just kept rewriting the script for it so I didn't want to I wanted to I thought obviously thought I could write it better so I was doing my own script <laughs> um cocky but um I, I kept rewriting the the script and then even when I kind of went into school I was still and I still didn't know what that thing was I'd never heard of it you know I was sweeping up air in my dad's air dresses <laughs> so um I hadn't heard that but I was surrounded by people telling stories all day long in this hairdressers um and my dad's a real like raconteur um so, so I think for me, I'm always like, I was just surrounded by storytellers um, and then had this kind of thing about writing scripts. I'd never, I didn't know that that was even a thing. So f- for me, I would always bring it back to grills in the mist <laughs> <laughs> and sweeping up hair in her hairdressers and thinking I like, like stories. It's a good place to hear a lot of different things going on from Ooh, people's I... lives all those little things that people just sort of randomly tell you while they're not directly looking at you yeah oh yeah <laughs> Most, uh, I heard so many stories I should never have heard <laughs> <laughs> it was great what about you guys Alice Chaz you know whoever wants to go first <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't mind Chaz you want to go yeah sure um I just love TV shows and films. I just think it's uh, a great way of, um, it's like an escapism really, isn't it? From <laughs> uh, real life, no matter what you've got going on in your life, if you've had a bad day or you're having a bad year or a bad life, you can <laughs> just uh, <laughs> put something on the TV and um, you know take you take yourself out into a different story. And I just, I, felt, I found that quite, you know, the effects that films and TV can have on people is um, is quite it's a huge uh, effect. I think it has it mm. controls how we all sort of think and behave and feel. And um, I just like writing, and I'd like to be a part of that. You know, like in a mm. fifty years or ten years, to, <laughs> it's like when uh, <laughs> when we're all uh, when we're all gone, it's just um our films and our tv shows and whatever that's left over as part of our um like that's our hmm. that's our work that's our sort of legacy <laughs> okay. yeah that's yeah. I feel a similar way I think I was lucky because I grew up in a very like creative family we were always kind of uh, writing music was actually the start and I actually think like writing scripts and stories is quite similar to kind of writing songs in a way that you kind of, the things you formulate and the things you create. And I think that's where it started. I got really like creative parents and I think they were kind of like, just do what you want, you know? So I would be writing music and then stories literally all the time, like on bits of paper in school, like, or just writing constantly. And I think I just kind of realized like it is just the best thing to do because it's just, it's so much fun. It really like works your brain and you can write stories that are just from any time, anywhere. And it's like like what you kind of said, like escapism in a way. It just it feels right to be able to take yourself away and just get into a story. It's just the best feeling ever. And it's the same with like writing songs. It's the same with anything really. I think it's just creativity and all that. It's just it's the best thing to do. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How about so this is this should be quite. A, is there? Do you guys have a particular genre that you sort of end up falling into or end up writing quite a lot that you really like? Um, and what's the reason for that? Or or and then or on the flip side of that, what do you find really difficult to write and why do you avoid it? 
Uh, I, I, I love writing dark comedy. Um, <laughs> <or> comedy. <laughs> um, I just find it a lot easier to write. It's more um, natural to me, if it, especially if it's like Northern characters, Northern dialogue is just really easy for me to write. But like, cause you know, <laughs> it's, it's where I'm sort of from. If it's, you know, characters in a storyline that's set in London, I'm just sort of like, oh, how do people talk in London? Like, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah, I love comedy, I love dark comedy. I think drama, um, I've, I've written a few uh, short dramas. I find that a lot um, more difficult, actually. I find, because uh, I think with drama, um, it can be boring if you don't do it right. Because um, obviously, whatever it is you're doing, you want the audience to feel something. You want them to be entertained or um, sad with a powerful message behind it or whatever. But it's a lot harder to write drama for me than it is to write um, something that's more upbeat. Um, mm. Yeah. yeah. I kind of feel that, to be honest. I think when I'm writing stuff, I do dabble in all sorts of different genres, but it's got to be something that I can relate to because I don't, kind of like what you said, I don't think I could write about something I don't know at least a little bit because it would feel wrong. It would feel like an imposter, but I kind of, use like all aspects of my life and personality and try and put that into different genres and see what kind of comes out because you know there's so many layers to everything I think things work out but at the same time I don't want to write about something that isn't something I know because I don't think I could do it enough justice if you know what I mean yeah I get I, I get that um I think yeah I mean I do like um exploring characters and sort of situations that you'd never personally find yourself in um mm, yeah that I find it quite interesting to sort of have a character that's so sort of out there that um and different from yourself and then you can step into their shoes and get in yeah. their mindset and think you know how what's their motive what how would yeah. they feel what would they say in this situation and it's it's kind of like acting when you're writing it because um, it's just getting out of your out of yourself to to do like a different role. But um, yeah, but I totally I, I do agree with you. It's easier to do something that you can relate to more. Um, mm. So if it's, you know you wrote similar sort of background to yourself or lifestyle, then it is a lot easier and um, more realistic to yeah. To do that. that being said sometimes just throwing yourself in the deep end I mean I wrote a fantasy for my film you know what I mean it's yeah. like yeah you know, it's about kind of finding a plot that you think you could do justice while also kind of stepping into the unknown a little bit I think the balance is important yeah absolutely so, I mean, with something like this, uh, this actually sort of leads on to one of the other questions that we actually have on here, um, which is, so you guys obviously are talking about how you write things, which, you know, you you sort of have, you pull from experience, right? And you, you things that you know, and like, I, one of the questions is actually, do you think that students fall into the trap of writing about themselves and not about characters? Um, do you feel, I mean, I don't know, if, like, I don't know, because Beth, obviously, you, you see a lot of scripts as well. So I don't know if you see this sort of problem at all. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily a problem, but a someone problem. seems to think it might be. No, I don't. I, you know, I'm always like, ask me tomorrow and I'll see what I think. I don't think it's uh, a problem. Um, I think, uh, I do think that anyone can kind of, to a degree, I, I agree with both of the points about, there's a phrase, isn't there, about write what you know. Um, but I think, you know, that can mean lots of different things about, right, what we know. It doesn't necessarily be things that we've, you know, experienced directly uh, or even indirectly. It could be down to research. It could be many different things that we know. It might be nothing that we know or experience, but we, we, we understand, I don't know, love at the end, uh, uh, you know, or envy and you're going to write a sci-fi based <laughs> in a, I don't know, in a, I'm just going to leave it sci-fi. Um, but, you know, so 
writing what you know I, I don't I, I I just I remember someone saying that once to me and I found that quite con uh, constrictive as a thing that I had to could only write about anything that I've personally experienced but then I kind of thought it was a wider thing so I don't it's how it, I think it's like with anything it's how we approach it um and yeah I think it's about how we approach any character um and and that how is you know that 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 jumping off point isn't it in terms of exploration of story of character um all those kind of elements so I don't see mm. it as a problem I um it's a it's a thing to explore as you guys as students do you find yourselves like when you're initially coming up with ideas for scripts do you find yourself when you're writing a character do you find that it's sort of a little bit like you or do you find it's about people you know or like I don't know mm. sort of a weird little I yeah. don't know, it's hard to say it's hard to maybe identify sometimes um in your own writing maybe yeah I mean I feel like with everything I've written I've put a little bit of myself into it like not even deliberately but you know from feedback from people they've said like you know this you can tell you've written it I don't know if that just comes across through style or like stuff like that but I do feel like when you write you kind of have to put yourself into it or else it won't feel genuine it won't feel you know right I think you kind of have to put yourself into it I'm not necessarily like saying through characters but I think when you write you put yourself into it because that's how you make it just feel right I'm not yeah I think so anyway um I think in some scripts I have used like elements of um me but then in others just absolutely not so mm -hmm. it depends on on um in what which <laughs> which story it is so uh you know for I've done uh, some scripts where a base character sort of on traits of myself or family members or friends, or I've written characters with an actor in mind and imagined them playing that character and, and written it that way. But I've also written characters and storylines that I just have absolutely no connection. And I just like, because I, it's, it depends as well if you like the character or not. Like, you you know, you might not think, oh, well, you know, you wouldn't want to be angry with them, but in the same room <laughs> or something. But it's, uh, yeah, so, but it's just, um, so I, I, I think with whatever character you write, it's, you know, you've got to take yourself out of it and your own personal feelings on something and put that aside to think how that character would feel. So it's like just for example, like say um, someone someone died, then um, you know how would you feel about like someone dying? And then obviously you're gonna feel upset about that and all of sort of emotions. But then if you have a character and in that context someone isn't gonna be upset that this other character dies, then you have to think, right? Well, how would they feel? And then step into it like that. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So you don't always have to relate to your characters in a way that you like them. So I've written yeah. this is nothing. I hate them, but yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Yeah. I have a weird, actually, actually, like I don't normally make input on things, but I actually am really starting to get into script writing. And my sort of weird input about this is that I've I've said this before to some people. It might be on the podcast. I don't even remember anymore. Um, <laughs> but I play D and D. And I actually like, so I run the games, so I sort of play all the other characters in the world. And that's kind of a weird scenario where I sometimes when I make a, like come up with a character for that, I hate the character. I don't like them. I want them to die. But like, I've got a sort <laughs> of meaning, like, I, th I find it better to write a story if that character has some involvement in, in the wider world of what's happening around them. And they sort of, there is things happening around them that, you know they have a story like even even be it short enough that it's you know relevant i don't know mm. and that's sort of the way i sort of tackle it but i don't know if it's um you know when you're trying to write 10 different characters or something or like i don't know how like mm. maybe it averages like three characters like all of those with different stories getting to a certain point 
is it good is it a good method of like trying to build an entire world around them or am i sort of going about it the wrong way maybe if i always say every character thinks the film's about them <laughs> so you know like if we yeah, work like around in our own lives <laughs> whatever happens we're like well what about me <laughs> and you're like this isn't <laughs> about you um but the characters don't know they're not in a in a script you know so i think it's, it's it i would say it's really important to to know those characters and the more that we can think about them as characters rather than thingies mate why they're there or they just pop up because I need them to do that you know we've got it's a missed mm. opportunity in storytelling because there's a function for them number one story-wise for them to be there and number two that it's for you as a script writer to show off that this kind of plethora of characters I get too excited don't I but you know what I mean <laughs> characters that you've got that you can play with you like oh I'm gonna throw them in and you might only see them like on the bus but you're like love them you know so, yeah I would say yes. Yeah, I've found that sometimes when I experience things, I sometimes think, how would this character react? And I think that helps when you're kind of shaping them because to kind of put yourself into their shoes in a way. That kind of leads a little bit to your earlier question. You know, you said writing it, you know, is it wrong to write a script that has you? Well, there has to come a point in your script where there's not only one character. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or you're like the all oh, me. So, <laughs> so you know you you probably find <laughs> maybe elements of something, but after a while you're developing lots of characters. If even if that is your starting point, you know, after a while mm. there's going to be these lots of other characters that will be new. And who knows on a process you, that that one might get dropped down and this other one comes up instead and gets the reins as a story. Hmm. let's see we've got some other we've got some other quite fun questions here this one's um directed to uh, alice actually and i assume this is about i think this one is about your uh your obviously your current scripts which was um in the question so oh, yeah. goes how do you go along how do you go about writing a, a no dialogue script like what was the process mm -hmm. did it did you always intend for that to happen or did it sort of organically as you started to write it is that what started to you know happen I think it was definitely as we kind of because we came up with the idea and we kind of we didn't know exactly what it was going to be at the start. We were like, we want to write something to do with the environment that we can film in a forest because we were just we wanted to try something new. And then as we kind of went along, we were thinking, actually, I don't really think it needs dialogue. I think we should try and tell this story in a different way. And that's when obviously the film, the film has a dog in it. And um, that kind of that decision, I think brought about the whole non-dialogue thing because we were like we wanted to show how the characters can bounce off each other when obviously one of them can't speak because it's a dog and the other one is a, a girl um who lives with the dog in the forest and I think we just kind of as we went about we were kind of thinking about ways that we could make it more interesting and I think the no dialogue thing just kind of sprung out at one point and then you know we, we tried writing minimal dialogue and then we were like you know what no actually I think we want to we want to go full throttle and just try this with no dialogue and I think it was just so interesting to do because I'd never really done that before but it was just such an interesting idea that we took it ahead I mean I don't know if uh Chez or like have you ever written a script sort of with with minimal dialogue like that or no dialogue like what sort of like what was your or have you have you read um have you read Alice's script at all? Um, I read um, the draft that was done in the um, script workshop with Beth, um, and, and I enjoyed that. It was good. Um, Cheers. And then since then, um, Alice has um, it, 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 you made it longer, didn't you? The story and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, with like. With like, I don't know, the no dialogue thing, because I've not read the script, obviously. I'm sort of like, <laughs> I know, I under, I sort of get the, so there is literally no dialogue at all. No one says a word. No, not really. I mean, when we were kind of on set, there's been the occasional sort of um, call or shout from the girl when she's been acting, but we, we didn't plan for any lines or anything. A lot of it was more kind of the director's influence of let's see what happens if we do it this way. But in the script, there's there's no dialogue whatsoever. It's more just kind of 
a series of interactions and then just kind of it it's it's weird like I'd never done it before and honestly it was it was kind of scary going into it because I felt like I didn't have dialogue to fall back on I I really enjoy writing dialogue like I I love it but I thought it was just really mad the way I was writing it because it was basically it felt like a long kind of stream of consciousness in a way um and it was just it was mad but I really enjoy writing it and I'm definitely gonna do it it was just really interesting as a writer for me anyway how is it um i know you filmed a little bit uh how is that sort of translated onto screen then because i guess that's sort of you know the end product of these scripts is mm. hopefully being on a on a screen somewhere um yeah what, how, how does it look how does it translate uh in you know in the edit well so when I, I was on set and i had the script with me and obviously i'd work closely with like the dop and the director to kind of translate what <laughs> In, into you know shots and stuff and I think it's just it's really beautiful in a way because the the way the the girl because she the, the actress was really really into the script and she's obviously really got in the head of the character because she she is that character and the way she reacts it's like it's really great because she just kind of the way I've written it it basically just translated pretty much perfectly into screen which I don't know if that's my writing or if it's her as an actress or maybe both but it honestly, I've I've seen the edit, and it honestly just feels like the script has just become real. It's it's really cool, actually. If I can just uh, like obviously I've I've read the script with um with Alice, and I've seen how it's kind of developed, and um it's kind of really kind of credit Alice for the amount of work that goes into <laughs> into writing something in this way, and, and you use the word stream of consciousness, and it's like you know that kind of. It, it's much more <laughs> than that what Alice has created because she's having to think about kind of um, the real balance in terms of the craft in that story that's all about externalising the internal. So all the internal thoughts of this character has to be externalised through the action. But at the same time, she's got to make that work really hard, that action, because, you know, otherwise it's boring, isn't it? It's just somebody wandering mm. around, not speaking. You're like, please... So Alice had to work incredibly hard to really think about the structure of the story, about the um, the action within a scene to ensure that she didn't get kind of too into just writing some lovely prose and then using mm -hmm. a scene heading because you're like, well, that just sounds nice, but nothing's happened. So mm -hmm. she has to work so hard to make everything really be crystal clear that this is action and it's driving a story forward and it's got character goals in it and it's showing layers and it's conveying characters' thoughts without anyone saying a word. So it's a really complex uh, way, mm. but I think I always get asked people to attempt that as writers because it really makes you consider what's happening within your scenes and within your story and how you really take advantage of the visual medium. Just on my nose. <laughs> This is sort of a, 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 a train line into the, the 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 last Instagram question that we have. Uh, just I think I think just getting through them because these are pretty good. They're, they're all right. They're pretty good. They're all right. <laughs> good job, Instagram. I'm glad you actually gave us some questions for a change. Uh, what's more important when writing a script, character or plot, and why? <laughs> um, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would say there's a real. I mean, you need both. Like, it say it's a chicken and egg situation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I've got a character. What are they doing? Rock all. <laughs> Just watch them. <laughs> then, then you'd be like, they're all good, but I, well, where's the? Yeah. And then you could have a really high concept piece, and you're like, well, who am I following in this? Nobody. Yeah. Well, I'm not really bothered, then, am I? In a world where this happens, who's it about? Nobody. Mm. <laughs> yeah if you prioritize one the other one's gonna lack and i think that'll affect it i think you've somehow got to put a hundred percent into both somehow because if not you know it's gonna have weak points somewhere they're both equally important i think definitely and i think oh, i'm getting nitty goody but like plot and character go almost hand in hand because when you're talking about plotting that's the things that happen so you know once we, you could say stuff happens, couldn't you? Like these things happen, but you always want to bring that back to how does that affect the characters within the story of moving forward? Mm. Otherwise, again, you're like, so, 
I don't know, something happened in the world and then this happened and then that happened, you know. Yeah. It depends what you're doing. I mean, my logic then was well, if you've got like a, a 20 second scene or something, you don't necessarily need a character, but something's got to happen in the plot. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you, you watch a feature film with like no character. So. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be annoyed if nothing happened and all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Oh, go on. No, no, go on. I was just going to say. I mean, character is action, really, isn't it? Like an action plot. So it, they kind of are each other in a way, you know. Like because character can't happen without plot, and plot can happen without character, but not in the same way. It would be very weird if the film had absolutely nothing and no one in it. So I, I like. Yeah, that's what that's what I'd say. Character is action, I, I think. And I bet there'd be someone who goes, "Has to give you a film." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I, but again, that's process, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I kind of want to flip this question on its head then, and sort of turn it more to you guys as writers, and say, do you do you start with the idea, the world, or do you start with this individual and then build the world around them? Like, because you must have mm. like there must be a starting point that you prefer. Because I think I feel like I enjoy the world building first, and mm. then putting characters into that and making them interact with the world around them. But I yeah. maybe that's just sort of the way my brain works. It's very d and I like it. <laughs> I normally start with, um, like, the world sort of an event that happens. So if I've got, like, um, an idea or, like, a, a visual of, like, a shot or a scene, um, and then it's sort of how can I make that happen? So then you develop your character from that and then um you know taking in mind of the the genre and um like sort of who the audience is as well like in relatability and things like that and to get them to like the character but then to get the character to then end up in that situation that you want them to be in um you've got to then plot down the motifs and then sort of link them in to sort of justify their actions and the mm. reasoning for, for for what they're doing to get to the the image that you that you started with and to and to build your character into that world. Yeah. I feel like when I started writing like even just books when I was little I felt like I always started with like my name is this and I am this I felt like I always started with the character and then it kind of just built up around them so I think yeah because I felt like the world came after but I don't know if that's just changed but I'm not sure like I think when I started it was always character and then where can I put them in the universe kind of thing if your character's um you know, they're not just going to have one level your character throughout a script. They're going to, at some points, feel sad and happy, or they might guilt, or there's so many emotions that a character can feel. So um, if you start with the character and then you're thinking, right, well, how do they feel? How do I want them to feel? How do I want the audience to feel watching this scene? And then you, uh, and then you build the sort of world around them afterwards. I think I'd find that more difficult. Instead, whereas if you have the, the scenario or the world, and then you have the character in there and then you place yourself in the character's shoes to think, right, well, how would the character feel in this scene? Like, with yeah. the stuff that is going on around them. Like, and then what, from that, does that, cr the, the ripple effects, so like, how do they react? Because whatever their action is will then make them to feel something else. So that's, mm. that's just the way I do it. Yeah, I, with my, because I'm actually writing my third year film, so I'm going down your guys' path of being the writer. Um, don't know why, but yeah, I'm sort of committing to that now. Um, I'm starting with, I have the idea of the world. I know what I'm doing with the world. I sort of know where I've got an idea of these shots and stuff, like Jazz has been saying. And I like, the thing, the biggest thing I'm struggling with at the moment is making a meaningful character that people are going to be able to relate to. And I don't know. I, I, I think it's hard sometimes when, when maybe you do have like a high concept world that is, you know, you maybe you can't relate 
super to it. I don't know. I'm, hmm. I'm, I'm having a bit of a weird time at the moment because I'm still focusing on other stuff and I'm trying to write this script at the same time. I need, yeah, I need to really think about it. But yeah, I, how long did it take? Like, how long did it take you guys to write your third year scripts? Um, I like in when I was at the end of second year, I had a totally different idea. Like, I wrote it out. It was like thirty pages, and it was completely different. And then I think when coming back in third year, we kind of stripped it down because the one I wrote in second year was very kind of nature based and very kind of magical. And then coming back, we were like, right, we're going to strip this all away and we're going to kind of build it up from the bottom. So it kind of went through about four different changes. But I think that's kind of good because you'll kind of it will develop as you develop because, you know, I can not sound like Ugh, but you're going to be a different person in third year than you are in second year so I feel like you're gonna it will develop with you but I think that's all right like if it goes through changes because they're probably for the best if you feel like they're right but I felt like yeah mine just took forever to change but then we once we had the idea like the seed we could build it up from there um I think the like initial um it, it took me a few days to get um up to like draft three I think but then after that, to go from draft three to draft seven, it was like months because it was just like changes within the story that, you know, at different points in, of pre-production and production um, that changes were made. So, it, you know, obviously I've not been sat there for months doing it, but each time <laughs> um, it does, um, it takes time to you know because I, I did set seven drafts and in each of those drafts I, I think I did a, like two or three versions so it yeah. was <laughs> a lot of um like changing things I'm just gonna say because you you guys were doing script writing in semester one weren't you and then yeah. and then as we said before we had these three weeks in the January so you had something that you kind of brought to that and then we kind of the, you guys worked really hard to kind of unpack that and repack that and work into kind of changes and so they were incredibly hard to develop the scripts yeah did you um when you guys were writing uh did you have um did you have an ending in mind did you know what your end was going to be did you have a kicker ending or did you just sort of like <laughs> fall into like oh this is what's happening now i guess um <laughs> that seems to happen with me a lot. <laughs> I uh, I changed my ending actually because um, so and I, I knew what the end was going to be, but then I so I just had an idea for like a post credits um, ending, and I added a scene in, and then um, yeah, it ended up just being the ending, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and I just think it. Uh, works it's just like that if it adds some if it adds value to the story um and the character arc then you know change it but if it doesn't then just keep the ending the way that you originally intended hmm yeah I feel like my ending changed a few times like the original ending was a lot tamer I think because the ending that we went for is quite hard hitting but we were kind of thinking along the lines of it's about the environment we want to kind of make it quite raw and um the ending changed a few times and then we settled on one that I was thinking from the start so kind of similar to you like thinking like you know that initial kind of gut feeling of what should happen um and then we carried that one through but it did go through a few like we kept changing our minds of what would be better to finalize the story with but I think the one we settled on felt a lot more like cyclical and complete for me. I think it's always quite easier to, um, if, a lot of the time it's the ending that you've got in mind when you start writing and then it's about getting to getting there. <laughs> so yeah. that, like, um, you know, it's not always a good thing, but. Um, so you sort of knew your ending though. You knew what, where you were going to go with your script but by the time you'd started writing. Yeah, so I knew um, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit of a closed question, really. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it's, it, I think I think the problem with script writing, right, is that it's a hard one because it's obviously so different for everyone, and it's very much based on sort of personal experience, and there isn't necessarily a, a right or wrong way to write a script. If you can write a story that's, I don't know, telling like giving some i don't know is it what why why write a script why do we bother why do we care i don't know <laughs> why do we bother beth help what, what i don't said? know why you bother um i don't mean it like that <laughs> <laughs> oh. why, why you do it cause like, but you you talked about but i think there's something in us isn't there that like that we're storytellers and also we've picked a medium that we really like so like, why do we bother? And we're like, oh, I love it. Why do you want to do another draft? Mm-hmm. Someone's giving you loads of notes, and you're like, yes, hit me again. <laughs> but you kind of really get into that. Like you said about process, getting feedback is process. Yeah. Like and understanding that coming away with like a notebook full of notes and feedback mm. isn't a criticism and is kind of actually part of the process. Is like hit me, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> so it is that question. I do think a lot of writers, nice speak to loads of writers that'll go at different, like, why am I bothering? Why am I still doing this? I'm like, well, ask that question actually of yourself. Like, why are you keep coming back to this story? Why is it you want to tell that story? Why is it you're so committed to these characters? And sometimes we forget that. I think, like, we just keep going and we're like, oh, I, oh. and it's like, and again, I always come back to process. It's this layered approach, you know, it's understanding structure, understanding how you're using it. Then it's about understanding character and going, how are we using those characters and why are we using them? But we don't know that we're doing that when we first do it. So you kind of come round and you go, you know, well, why have you picked that ending? Because it just came to me. Well, why have we picked that ending? What's it going to do? And you're like, I don't know, actually, you might do this, this, this. And you come back and you go round. So... I think there's something within us as storytellers. Chesney said it before about, you know, things that you want to say or change. The, I'm always like, you can change the world as a writer, <laughs> you know. And the thing, there's so many different reasons about why we do it. But I think that there is there has to be some massive drive because it is such a process and it is it is dead hard. <laughs> you, know? you know, anyone who kind of goes one draft, done. <laughs> You're like, probably that person um because it, it, it is it is I remember someone describing it to me as like the homework that never ends mm. because you know like even now I imagine you know if your film's made you're probably still looking at it as a screenwriter and going oh and you know we we kind of naturally do um but I think once you get the book the writing book then that kind of gets you doesn't it you know and you are still thinking about it and you said like Chesney you've been writing that for months and the drafts and the caring about a line and you know and yeah. we, we were sat talking for ages about la- a, a line <laughs> you know? we were like oh and we go let's let's leave it a day and come back to that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need more time um so yeah I, I don't I you know I'm always like I don't have the answers but I definitely I definitely feel the passion uh, I think always comes back to passion everything it's always passion with this industry yeah I think it does um I was listening to a podcast this week you probably all listening to the The film production podcast guys Um, yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah um but Jordan Peele and um he was saying you know who wrote Get Out and Oz and he was saying like you know for him it's all about following the fun and I, you know, I think as writers, we've got to, you know, you've got to find that thing that you're like, that's the fun bit for me. And it might be that character or a writing exercise or I don't know. It keeps it fresh. <laughs> but I've not answered any question there, really, because I don't <laughs> have an answer, is there? I think it's very individual for us, for everybody. So we have a we have a one question here that I've just seen. Um Secret between, behind a great, great plot twist? What, what's, uh, is, it, is there a secret or is it, um, oh my God, a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, the plot twist. Is there, is there a way to sort of approach a plot twist or, you know, is, is there some sort of way you can attack them? I don't know. 
because they're pretty they're pretty like when when you when you sit down in the cinema and you watch a great plot twist you're like damn that was that was <laughs> epic and you just you don't know how's it made it, misleading the audience is obviously the, an easy way to do that um so misdirection <laughs> I would, I would, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I don't know, uh, you get. I would say it's about anticipating your audience's expectations. So, you know, in order to give a plot twist, you've got to know what you like. You all say about misleading the audience. You've got to know what your audience is thinking, or you're hoping that they're <laughs> thinking at that point, in order to play with that expectation. Um, but then there's a lot of serious work that's got to be done in advance of that because you go plot twist <laughs> and you're like, oh, um, you know, it's got to it's got to feel worthwhile as well. Rather than it's just moved in a whole new direction or they did it. So I think there's a, um, a lot of architecture, you know, a lot of design in, in a plot twist about kind of thinking about everything that's led up to that point. Um, and what that will create in a, an audience's mind in order to then, like you say, mislead them and to turn and to go, oh, OK. But also you you love that aha moment, don't you, as an as a audience member when you go, oh, you know. So I think kind of the timing as well of it is very crucial um, about, you know, I think it's brilliant writing when you can get to that point and sometimes you're at that same point as the protagonist where you both kind of go, oh, and you both kind of catch it. So again, that's kind of, that's pacing, that's knowing your audience and considering the audience and also its structure. See, I get into the boring stuff, the mind, structure, fun. They're necessary though, right? You need structure to have a good story or to know where your story is going especially if you're writing something non-linear which is uh, I imagine um you know quite a bit of a mess really when things are sort of all happening at different times was your wait mm. was, Chaz was your film non-linear was it was yes it all over the place? is it no refunds is uh non-linear so it was uh that did make it harder <laughs> to uh <laughs> achieve it's the first one that I've done non-linear Mm. Uh, so it sort of almost starts with the end mm. and then goes back and then forwards and back and forwards and um but then uh I works that into the the narrative and the stylization of the film um so it all tied in nicely but to get there it was very difficult <laughs> did you find it was easier to start out by writing the events in time order and then restructure them later or did you always write them sort of in the weird back to back everything happens at different times kind of way what was your process so, for that um I, I i did write it in a chronological order um in the plot points and then i just uh like sort of once I had my timeline of that real world, then I, I took scenes and moved them around to make them work. Um, but I I did know how it was how I wanted it to start. It was just then sort of getting from the start, which is actually the end, to go in backwards and forwards throughout to then get back to the end, which is the start. <laughs> so, um, but yeah it, it worked out I, I don't know if I'm biased but I think it worked out really well um, and it definitely suited um, this particular project no refunds um, I don't think it would work necessarily with some of the other scripts I've written but with this one it, I think it worked very nicely yeah it's um you guys have got me like both of you've got me so excited to see your films like Aww. i can't actually i really hope you manage to finish your film alice and i know i know obviously Ches and your film's nearly there um i really yeah. i really want to see both of them because you know especially knowing how much time you guys have both put in as writers to really make this your own pro like your own projects as well you know but you've obviously got all the everyone you know everyone else has worked on the team with you as well obviously yeah. shout out to them i mean do, do you feel like writers are particularly like um, underappreciated in the industry um like are they 
are they like the sort of the the hidden the hidden <laughs> people driving this industry forward and the director's always the one taking all the credit or if you're both writer and director then you know <laughs> a bit cheeky but what can i say um I, I think writers are underappreciated um, because it all starts with the the script. I mean, if if you've got a, a poor story, then it's gonna just trickle down to everyone else, and and then ultimately the final products will just you know you can have these massive explosions or like um, you know a plane crash or something like that, but then if like it. It's just like, wow, so what? I don't care. You need to feel something. So it also comes from the writer, really. And when you write something, you have to then mm. also think, like, you know, how can this be directed? How can this be produced? Like, where's this going to go? Um, how can it be edited? How can, you know, the, the camera movement be here? And so it's just not necessarily putting it into the script, but, um, you know, thinking that there is options there or how it could look and you have to sort of imagine it as you're writing it um so yeah I do think that being the writer is very difficult and I also think writers get the blame as well um when you know if further down the line if it not on, not on my production at the minute <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think that you know if if there's issues sometimes with a film and it can be like, oh, well, yeah, it was with, with the script, but it's not always the case. Like, um, yeah, give writers credit, yeah. they work hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that with the experience I had, like, I, I don't know about the industry, but in my team, I think I actually, I'm so lucky to have such a great team because we all kind of, were very aware of each other's roles so I think that's like that's always a massive help like having people that can listen to you and you can work well with each other like when I was writing my idea like everyone was so supportive and kind of helping through that process and um, I don't know about the industry in general but I'm really glad that I had a team that not only helped me through, but they were also really interested in the idea and they didn't try and take over or really put their own ideas in. Even like Georgie, the director, like it was almost just as much her idea as it was mine, but she let me do my own thing. And I, I think that was really great. Like I have such, I have such a great team that maybe going into the industry, maybe I've had too nice of an experience that that's going to uh, horrify me. But no, I'm just, I was just, I had a great, experience with my team so I was really happy with that actually I can second that as well <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> you know even though even though I, I did I was the one to write it it was definitely a collaboration and I feel like on no refunds um more than anything that I've done before it was a lot of collaborative work so even with the scripts you know we'd have team meetings and everyone had give their opinions on it everyone would give feedback on it and share ideas and then I'd go away and work those into the next draft and stuff so it is definitely you know it's not mm. it can be lonely if you try to just write it all on your own and think you know my idea is amazing you don't listen to anyone else it, you do need that collaboration from other people in your team and it's it's great when they get excited about it and then you know, and then they start sharing ideas. And I just, I loved that working on no, no refunds um, when everyone else sort of got really passionate and was coming up with stuff. And I was like, yay, so, you know, it's happening. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's, it's, it's actually really nice to hear that, you know, as right as you guys are brainstorming a lot with your team as well, because this was sort of something else I wanted to ask was, you know, how well did you guys work as like with other people in terms of writing? And obviously, you know, it isn't just a, a one man job all the time or a one woman job. Mm. We're very inclusive here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Um, if we want to, we, we are getting towards the hour. So I'm thinking one more question and then we'll do sort of the, the film thing. And then, what and film then thing? oh, you need to recommend a film. Sorry. <laughs> you weren't here for that. <laughs> if you can recommend something thematic to do with writing as well, then. Even thematic that. to do with writing <laughs> then you get bonus you get brownie points for that but uh, okay you get film production podcast points so 
Oh. You guys, all of you, what what would you give in terms of advice to a first time writer, someone who's never written before but really wants to start getting into that? What is it? What is your what is your stuff? Hmm. You can take your time. I, right? As a as a first writer, in terms of uh, approaching a script, or just someone who's never written a script before and really wants to, or is you know is like trying to get into writing, or maybe has tried a few times and like maybe stopped, or you know whatever whatever okay. the situation is. What what what's your advice? Uh, my advice. I didn't give you something. My advice um, for a writer that kind of stops, starts, has maybe started writing and then stopped is probably the thing that you might not want to hear, but I would say it comes down to structure. Um, and I think starting an idea and stopping halfway through, I would say kind of get yourself down to like eight points that are kind of the essential kind of eight in terms of you know who's your protagonist what do they want what's the narrative trigger what are the obstacles how do they generate conflict what's the climax what's the resolution and what's it all about and if you can kind of work through those eight points then you've got a really simple framework and then you can kind of just go and write something um but yeah i would say if it, if it, if it keeps stopping midway through then that would be down to kind of structure um well, my, my other top tip, I've given two top tips, I'm so you could edit one out, right? <laughs> other top tip might be, um, would be being kind to yourself as a writer. If you're a new writer and you feel like it doesn't kind of sound quite right or it isn't kind of working, be kind to yourself and treat it as a new instrument and that you're just simply learning the chords. Much more succinct. <laughs> I'd say um, think about your audience, think about your genre um, and where it where it's going to go. So, you know, what are you going to do with it in the end? Is it actually going to be made? Um, where is it going to be shown? Like, are you planning for a feature or is it going to be in the cinema? Like, is it going to be a TV show? Like, you've just got to try and, like, write it for a purpose for something and then sort of know where it is because then it, obviously like if you know your audience where it's going to end up then you can write for that audience but if you don't really know where you're going then you can't really i feel i feel like it, it's going to be a lot harder to to get there <laughs> if you don't if you get what i mean so um yeah so if you you know if you if you want to write a comedy then you need to know where that is going to go like to to which audience so hmm. if you if you write a um something with a all male cast um you know all caucasian like it's it's not going to end up on netflix probably like <laughs> you, you you need to think about where it's going to go yeah I would say I think if you're struggling and you kind of feel like you're you're struggling with a scene or with a character I think the important thing to remember is that you can always go back to it and work on things like there is no such thing as a final draft I know we say that a lot but genuinely like I think if you keep working you've got such great ideas that you're going to be able to make something you just have to keep working at it and honestly it will be okay once you've kind of figured things out and you can just write and you know it might take time but you you'll get there I think is what I'd say awesome awesome thank you uh beautiful advice from well succinctly put um from me <laughs> <laughs> um so we are getting up to about the hour. We don't want to make this too long. I could go on forever talking about this. I love script <laughs> writing. I love the process. I love all of it. Yes. But we do have to end, unfortunately. We can come back another time. Um, but we need everyone to recommend a quarantine film. Ooh, what quarantine Ooh. film are you guys recommending? <laughs> quarantine film. What, 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 do you, what do you want people to watch? And maybe give me a quick why as well. Why you want people to watch it? I know I'm making it extra hard. <laughs> yeah, the films that I that I was thinking, I was like, mm, I don't want to make people watch them. <laughs> no, you've got to 
be be committed just commit to one and then be like yeah you should watch this film because it's amazing when we film you uh, we were thinking about a film about writing um was adaptation i'd be like that's a film to if you've not seen that so do i get bonus point no <laughs> yeah you get a yeah. bonus point because it's about it's thematic yeah you get okay. phil brooks podcast point for just yes. one one <laughs> One point. <laughs> I don't, this is a system I've come up with today. I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, know what you can't keep it. <laughs> but a film for quarantine. What have you watched, Guy? What, what have you. Has anyone. Can I jump in? Yes. I watched a film last week that I hadn't seen before called Book Smart. I think it came out yeah. last week. And honest to God, I just really enjoyed it. Like, the writing was great, but not only that, like, the characters were so compelling and the story was great. And I just, I left the film just feeling really happy. And I know things aren't great at the minute. So it was genuinely just a really feel good film. Like I was really invested in all the characters and yeah, I just really liked it. Like everything about it, I thought was just really good. So that's the one I'd recommend Booksmart, I'd say. Um, I, I recently watched Joker for the first time. So might sound a bit, cliche bring it up is quite a relevant one but um yeah I loved I loved that I loved the way that the uh, it was written yeah I don't think I've seen that one I've not seen it, it yet it's weird I actually it was directed better than it was written but it was very very well written but it was I think it was directed even better than it was written we looked at the script didn't we in script right yeah, yeah. there was um a couple of things that in there that yeah. I can only think about films that I've watched recently. All of them quite bleak, really. Um, <sighs> so I would <laughs> stay on on a it's staying on bleak. Um, I'd probably say uh, if you've not seen the platform, I really enjoyed the platform. Have you anyone seen that? I've no. Uh, mm. Is it worth? I enjoyed the dog. Oh yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a bit with a dog in it. Yeah, it's not happy. Um, <laughs> it's not happy. But I watched a really fun film, Extraordinary. That was really fun and nice. Oh. Um, um, that was really fun. This week, my recommendation is Devs. If you guys... Oh, oh yeah. This is also related to the fact that I got to speak to uh well uh, very briefly not, but it, it counts i just got to speak to the editor the other day and that is oh on the God. u.s film production uh channel uh i think i think they put it on there uh jake roberts uh the editor he was chatting with a bunch of the editors thank you to revis who set that up so if you guys want to go and watch that you can that's also <laughs> You don't have to <laughs> don't make it might not be your cup of tea but you know there you go if you want to see an editor and a load of us children to ask him questions then yes great um, <laughs> yeah anyway i watched i've seen the first episode of devs I, I still need to watch it like i don't know it's hard to stay watching things my brain's all over the place but yeah i i, I really enjoyed it it's, it's kind of very high concept um weird sort of future type things yeah it's cool uh the team as well has recommended what's, things what's the team uh, the team juliet holmes uh first she has recommended Wes Anderson's The Darjeeling Darjeeling. Oh yeah, yeah. The Darjeeling Limited. Yeah. So yeah, there's a, she's given me a whole little plot synopsis there as well, which I might not read out. Uh, <laughs> it's got, but it's got Owen Wilson in it. So uh, maybe. Oh yeah, he's in a few of them, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Wes yeah. Anderson films. Um, mean Streets uh, by Scorsese has been recommended by Arif, and Lucy recommended the tv show freaks and geeks with seth rogan james oh, franco and linda cardell and yeah uh, yeah so <laughs> yeah this has been a really cool one i really like script writing guys. i'm so glad you all, you all came down and like had a cool chat with the cat there now oh my god the cat's back <laughs> hi um yeah so thank you so much guys for being part of this um especially you know while you're in quarantine and stuff and people you know need to be listening to creative things to keep them inspired so i hope this is inspired uh-huh. people uh to maybe start writing again we hope we can only hope um mm. yeah thank you so much to everyone who's listened don't forget you can go to at us underscore film production on instagram 
uh you can go to anchor fm youtube uh apple music spotify all your favorite musical platforms to find the podcast just type in us film production podcast and you can find it and listen to them all thank you (laughs) bye